Hi everybody, this is Della from Beauty of Play, and today I'm gonna to give you an inside look at our math journal. My daughter is in fourth grade, and this journal, we just keep going, so it's not done by grade, is um, part of third grade and into fourth grade. I leave a couple of the first ones blank for table of contents, but you can see I didn't do that very well. You can also use tabs to tab the favorite spots or um, the spots that you wanna go back to later. Keeping a math journal for us helps us to keep up with what she has discovered about my math and to go back and review it when it comes time to work on that particular concept again. So here you can see that we are working on division with a number line there. Um, and this has, is our division of circles, which is another way to work on division. Here we're dividing 12 and in here we're dividing 12 up in a circle form. And doing this allows us, like I said before, to come back and find concepts that she's working on or review. And just so you know, we really do do some worksheets too. I try to limit the amount of worksheets, but I think some level of repetition in some way and mastery is in, important. So we do do some of that. This was her Fraction Main lesson book, and I had her put a lot of details into this because I knew we would need to come back to it for review. Um, this is the, if you've seen my Fraction videos, and I encourage you to go and take a look at it, those, these are the concepts in those Fraction blog and videos that we did. So to find the fractions, we have to, our circle, and then halved our half, and we continue to have halves until we got all the sequence in halves, and then we went back and did the thirds in the same way. So you can just see the comparisons that we're doing. We did our fractions on the number line, and here we're working on adding and subtracting fractions and how that works. And then we worked on multiplying, just basic fractions. But a math journal really helps us to keep up with our journey. For instance, this particular exercise she did a year ago. And we did this in a limited fashion. We just got through doing it today again. And you can see it's different in how we journaled it, but it's also different in the depth of exploration and how far we went on that particular subject. We don't do everything again, but we do often do several of the same concepts over again. And a math journal just helps keep up with those things. So one of the things that I did was take a set of our cruisinaire cruise rods, our math manipulatives, just one set, one staircase, and a set of stamps. These are the stamps that we use. They are on our my Amazon favorites on my website. And this made entering the work that we did with Cues and Air Rods so much easier than drawing each one of them every time. So we're able to just stamp in our work here. So that's another way that that we use our math um, journal. And we start here, we're looking at quality of numbers again. She did quality of numbers in grade one, but that is more of an introduction to numbers um, and how they interact with each other. In this, we're doing all the different ways to make five. For instance, um, dividing five, like dividing five by one, dividing it by two, by three, and then 
um, like all the multiples in here that we've started adding fractions for that kind of work. And then we did a study of six and seven. And of course, when we did the quality of numbers in the beginning, we did not have fractional work or division. We may have had a little bit of division, definitely not fractional work for that. So you can see how our, our study of the number changes for that. And then we moved into this because the division and factoring are very much related as well as fractions. They are connected. And so we moved into fractions or not fractions, I'm sorry, factors and Um, prime and composite numbers. We used Prime Climb, and Prime Climb has a site that has math lessons on it, which is fabulous. I think that they were just ingenious to factor by color. And then we did a unit on capac capacity measurement and area, um, and that is this segment here. This is a combination, an effort. I am writing, making this worksheet, and she is filling in the worksheet. I also do a scaffolding even for math. So with a Charlotte Mason style narration when a child starts out, or even Brave Writer also, you write for them. So when she to keep her interest, when she loses interest in writing the numbers, then I will begin to write the numbers for her. She still is telling me the answers verbally, but I am writing down so that we have a copy of that in our notebooks. And this was a scavenger hunt for measurement, which she loved. And then this is her work on area. And then volume. And then as the culmination for her capacity unit, she did as many measurements as she could possibly do on a given object, and she chose her little wooden macaw to do that with. So she measured all kinds of different measurements. She weighed the bird and various other things. And then we worked and in, moved into our, this is the fraction review for this year. And you can see this is very workbookish. And then in addition to that, we're also doing some mental math. Um, she's continuing to work on memorizi memorizing the times table. But we are going back to exploring. And it was easy to just turn back to our fractions unit and see where she had done this before. But you can see in this one, we've added more fractions. In the initial introduction of the fractions, we had halves, fours, eighths, sixteenths, and then we had thirds, six, and ninths. We did not have fifth and tenths, and that was purposeful. But you can see here that I add those fractions in for comparison. So now we are going a little bit deeper into the fraction work. And these two are very nice activities. And this one, they, they give a lot of number sense for fractions. And that's my intent in spending so much time in fractions. Here she goes through and divides this one in half. To find the half. And just so you know, I initially drew um, a 10 block. I think it's 10. Yeah. Yes, 10 blocks that are the length of the page. And then she divided and colored in each one of the blocks. So here she's dividing it by one. Here, she's dividing this one by thirds. I, when we get to this point, she's pulling from the work that we've done before. And to find a fourth, she's taking half and then half of the half. 
And for the fifth, we know that it's going to be slightly smaller than the fourth. So she used that to come up with her fifths. For the six, we had half the thirds previously, so she's finding the six there. For the sevenths, we know they're a little bit smaller than the six, and that's also pulling from her fraction work that she had done previously. The eighths are half of the fourths, the ninths are a third of the third, and the tenths are half of the fifths. So that's how she's coming up with each one of these. So even though it looks pretty, it has a, a great deal more in pulling from the information that she's already done in the past. And this also is a great exercise that requires pulling from all kinds of information, looking for patterns, predicting what the next one will be, as a way to check yourself and so forth. Okay, so what this is, is a comparison of the rods. It, we're saying what fraction of one is one. So these, it, these rods correspond to the Cruzenaire rods. So this would be the white rod, the red rod, the light green, purple, and so forth. Let me, I'll get the rods and show you. These are our Cruzenaire rods. So what that basically means is that in this sequence going down here, this fourth is one. And this one, in comparison to this four, is one fourth. So we're comparing each number to the other number to come up with this. And what that does is allow us to recognize the different fractions going this way and the, recognize the relationship. If two is twice as much as one, then that means one is half of two. Because if you look here, there's ones going all the way down. And this is a mirror image of, of this section here flipped by this line that's one. So anyway great exercise. It does take several days. Um, so it's another one that looks pretty, but there's, it's much deeper. And it's a great way to not only make observations and look for patterns, but also draw forth on the knowledge that we already know to fill in this table. And then we did our number sums unit. And this is available for sale on my website. It walks you through this. These number sums allowed us to practice lots of different concepts in review, but to do it in a fun way and explore and see what happens when we add various numbers. This uh, first one was adding just the counting numbers. The second one was Pascal's triangle. The next one was a, an exploration of Fibonacci sequence. And then to find perfect numbers. So this first one is incorrect. This should be eliminated and this sum should be three. But a perfect number is a number. And when you add the factors of that number, not including the number itself, it adds to the number itself. So six and then the next one Next perfect number is 28. I also have a blog post on perfect numbers and finding perfect numbers. So we did that. This, this particular exercise is great because it uh, reviews factoring, and which also reviews multiplication and division in addition to adding. And these were our number sums for the multiples and the different spirals that they make. And then we went back to fractions again. And on this one we started, this looks like a worksheet, but on this one we're actually building with the rods and coming up with the least common multiple. 
and how that is done. Looking at this three and this four, when I build one third, it looks like this. This is my one and this is one third. When I build one fourth, it looks like this, right? So these are two different units. This is one fourth and this is one third. So we can't just add them together. And we have to find something that has both thirds and fourths in it. And to do that, we have to find out where three and four are commensurable, where they meet. So if we lay our three and fours down, we see that they meet with three fours and four threes, which is 10 and two, which is 12. From this point, we can say that one third, one, these are thirds, right? This is one third of 12 because there are three of them, is four. So four twelfths is the same as one third. That was our equivalent fraction. When I look at one fourth, that's this one right here, it's three. Three twelfths is the same as one fourth. And then she's adding those together. So even though this one looks like a worksheet, this one was not a worksheet and I did not have her stamp these in but we probably should have and we continued with that here but eventually we do a unit like this where it talks about how you add and subtract fractions with like denominators and then when you have denominators that are not alike and this would be an entry page. Maybe I would tab that for the future so when she's doing some work, she doesn't remember how to do it, let's go back and see how you did it before. Or what was your journal entry for that? So <clears throat> continuing on, and this was the work that we did for today. And that is the end of her math journal for this journal.